My name is Amanda Brinkman. I'm from Deluxe, and today I'm going to share with you the case study of how we feel we've revolutionized our brand. But more so, what I hope to leave you with the impression of is kind of one more proof point that as a business, I believe you can do well by doing good. Um, the way we approached raising brand uh, awareness and changing perceptions really was something uh, where we stood alongside our customers rather than just talking to them or advertising at them. So um, uh, if you know, how many people have heard of Deluxe? Yeah, okay. So we have been in the business of helping small businesses and financial institutions be successful for over 100 years. Uh, we started in 1915 and our legacy is really in the check printing space. Um, but the decline of checks has been uh, predicted for well over 20 years. So we started looking at our business model and figuring out what else could we be doing and who else could we be offering these services to um, to continue to grow our business because we're certainly not basing our growth off of checks. And one of the things that we noticed when we were working with small businesses is that they really struggle with the marketing side of things. The advent of the internet really allowed uh, small businesses to, to show up big online. It really has allowed them to compete. Um, but for those of you who know small business owners outside of the marketing field, many of them did not start their business because they couldn't wait to build a website or to figure out what the hell SEO is or how to manage their Twitter account. And so we felt like we were helping them operate their business. We felt like we could also help them market their business. So over the years, we started to evolve right alongside them and build out all of these services. So now Deluxe today, uh, much like an agency can, but at, at the affordable uh, rate that a baker could afford, um, we have things like logo, website, um, email marketing, promo and apparel, uh, business cards, anything they need to market their business. But when I joined the company about five years ago, the business problem was that less than 1% of small business owners either knew Deluxe or knew us for marketing. Um, and so we really needed to work hard to not only uh, raise awareness of Deluxe within small business segment, but also change perceptions of what they knew us for. So whatever we did really had to stand out. It had to break through kind of that clutter and that uh, hurricane of competitive spend. So we knew that content, or we felt like content, was going to be the thing that would really help us break through that clutter. But I have kind of a beef with the word content because we use it in the marketing field to kind of represent everything. A great social post, a white paper, a video, <coughs> a snackable content is a big phrase now. Um, so it couldn't just be content. It had to really be something that broke through. Um, so for me, whenever I started a new company, I love to go out and spend time with the customers. It really helps ground me in how they make purchase decisions, what it's like to be them. I don't feel like you can market to someone until you truly have kind of walked in their shoes and really understand what it's like to be a small business owner. Um, so I was out meeting with these small business owners and I would be at a restaurant and I would hear them talking about how hard it is to make money in the restaurant business and how they feel so bad because they're working 80 hours a week and don't spend time at home. Um, but I would peek over his shoulder and see a son in the back helping him prep his meals and I realized, oh my gosh, think about the work ethic you're passing on to your kids. Or going to a retail shop and I'd, I'd hear her talk about how she left corporate, she left the big business to start and run her dream, but how hard it is. And I was just so moved by these stories. And then that's when I feel, felt like the way we could break through the clutter is to really tell these stories. I felt like we could stand alongside small businesses and hopefully truly create a movement to get more people to support small businesses once you hear their stories. Because when you hear a small business owner's story, you feel compelled to support them. Uh, you're moved by that and we feel like we could inspire them. And that's when the small business revolution was born. And in the first year, the concept was that we would go across the country in our 100th year and tell 100 stories of small businesses. And we would do these through films and through photo essays. And again, we would ground ourselves in this movement. We truly wanted to try and get more people to support small businesses by hearing their stories. So in our 100th year, rather than making a video about ourselves, uh, we turned the spotlight and told the stories of small businesses, the people we wanted to reach, but also the people we wanted to honor because we um, had been so honored to serve them for 100 years. Our partners were really important as well. Of course, we worked with the SBA and with SCORE, which is a nationwide network of uh, mentors for small businesses. And all of these partners started to come on board. I mean, traditionally ones that are in a paid capacity, but in our case, just wanted to be a part of it. They couldn't believe that this big company that was serving small businesses where all of our competitors were just talking at them was actually standing alongside small businesses and creating this movement. Um, we enlisted uh, Robert Hershevac from Shark Tank. Um, so uh, for those of you who aren't entrepreneurs in the room, you watch 
lot, you know how Shark Tank really resonates and, and draws out that entrepreneurial spirit in you. Uh, you watch one of those episodes and you're like, ah, why didn't I think of that sock idea or that soap company? Uh, and so we knew that Shark Tank would be a really great way to kind of resonate with that audience. And so again, we told these hundred stories and we rolled it out throughout our hundredth year. And so it allowed us to have kind of this always on content and the momentum just kept going as the year progressed. And then right at our anniversary, we released this longer form documentary, which was really a point of view piece on the importance of small business um, and the important role that it plays not only in our communities and in our neighborhood, but to our economy and to our nation. Well, one of the things that we noticed when we were going across the country, uh, telling these stories and hearing these stories, is that nowhere are small businesses more under siege and more valuable than in our small towns. For those of you who are from a small town, you can probably attest, we've got these big box retailers moving in on the edge of town, national restaurant chains coming in, main streets being rerouted around the, the quaint downtown, and these small businesses are struggling to survive. Um, you have mom and pop shops uh, closing, third generation businesses not able to compete. And we felt like we could continue to build on this thesis of how important small businesses are um, by truly uh, putting our money where our mouth is and going out and helping those small businesses. We wanted to prove this thesis that if you have a strong small business core, that we felt like an entire town could thrive. There's nothing heavier than that than saying small businesses are so important that they can make entire communities thrive, not just themselves, but the entire um, community around them. So then we evolved it to the small business revolution Main Street. And so uh, the theory or the, the, campaign or the uh, structure is that every year, Deluxe asks people to nominate their favorite small town. And then we'll go out and invest half a million dollars in revitalizing the winning town's Main Street. So people nominate their town, we narrow it down, we go out and visit 10 communities, then we narrow it down to five and those are put up to public vote. And then whoever wins, we go and we actually shoot an entire show um, there. So uh, now the Small Business Revolution isn't 100 stories, it's a series, um, it's actually on Hulu, it streams online as well. Each season is eight episodes. Uh, episode one is about the town and the stakes, and then episodes two through seven are about an individual small business. And then the eighth episode is about how all of the effects um, came together to, to move the community. And so each of those episodes is kind of a makeover reality show um, with heart. Um, and we go out and we help the small businesses within the community. We pick six small businesses that we feel are core to that town and that town's um, uh, success. Um, and then we work with them. Um, so Deluxe helps them with the marketing piece of it. Um, Robert uh, joined us for year two um, and he was in season one and season two of the show. Uh, he helps them with their financial piece. We do physical renovations to the business, etc. The two things that small businesses struggle with the most is not understanding how to use marketing to grow and drive their business, how to use it, how to, how to actually execute marketing. And the second thing is they don't know their numbers or what the numbers are telling them. Um, and so uh, Deluxe is able to play a really natural role role in this and so we're able to communicate to people what Deluxe does but again it's for good. So we are actually standing alongside these customers. We're not just saying we love small businesses and we want them to be successful. We are actually going out to these main streets helping small businesses and what we love about the series is that it allows, um, we hear from small businesses all the time when they watch it that they're furiously writing notes but they also feel very seen. <coughs> We feel like it's one part education for sure but it's also one part inspiration and affirmation. It's very lonely to be a small business owner. You feel like you have to have that posturing, like I know what I'm doing, I'm running my own business, I'm a business owner, um, but you don't have that peer group like all of us do in our current employment, right? Like you, they need to feel seen. They need to recognize that other people are struggling with the exact same things and that they're not alone in, in not knowing their numbers or they're not alone in not being able to afford to replace that door that they know that they need to do um, all these years uh, or not understanding how to use their website. So uh, we love that this is actually able to inspire small business owners, certainly affirm them, inspire them, and we hope it, uh, it you know, uh, entertain some a bit too. But for me, what, what I think this really proves is that as a company, you can do well by doing good. So we have done well, we have achieved our business results of raising awareness, changing perceptions, continuing to add to that pipeline. But we have done good for the entire small business community on our way to doing that. I just recently gave a TEDx talk on this very topic. I believe every company is capable of this kind of behavior. Um, this isn't philanthropy. If you're a big company, you should be giving away money. That should be your duty as a corporate uh, citizen uh, in our economy. 
These are our marketing dollars. These are dollars that we are repurposing that we used to use to talk about ourselves at people, and we're using them to stand alongside them and advocate for them and help them in a more authentic way. And I, I think every company, again, is capable of this kind of behavior. And I love to think about what kind of a different world it could be if every company really performed and, and uh, acted this way.